Forget macOS 15 Sequoia because Apple's about to announce macOS 26 in just a couple of days at their WWDC event, which will now be dubbed macOS Tahoe. No, not taco, but Tahoe, like Chevy Tahoe. So if you're wondering why Apple is naming macOS after a pickup truck, you are wrong because it's actually named after California's beautiful Lake Tahoe. So before we get into all the new features that we should expect Apple to review next week as well as the list of compatible Macs and why I think M4 Macs will see a huge upgrade this time around. I want to first explain why Apple chose the name Tahoe. First of all, macOS is rumored to be getting a massive redesign for the first time in years, potentially the biggest overhaul ever featuring a brand new glass-like UI, according to Mark Gurman. And Lake Tahoe just so happens to feature beautiful glass-like vibes. And this was actually news to me, but Lake Tahoe is a very popular vacation spot for many Apple employees, marking how important of an update this is to Apple. So if you're trying to get an idea or imagine what macOS Tahoe is gonna look and feel like, here are some very good examples, some renders created by John Prosser and Concept Central. And if we want to dive even deeper with specifics, the new UI will consist of six different Vision OS inspired design elements, according to Mark Gurman and Mac Rumors. The first thing is that it's going to feature translucency, which the code name for the iOS 26 redesign project was known as Solarium, which is basically an all glass room that's designed to let in a lot of light. The second design detail is floating navigation bars and menus, which will use shading and shadowing to make the UI elements kind of look like they're floating in air or have some sort of lighting aspect to it. For number three, we're expected to get more rounded buttons and interface elements because Apple's app buttons have been squares and rectangles that are slightly rounded for many years. So Apple's looking to make everything look a bit more circular. For the fourth design detail, we have a glassy look, which almost looks like frosted glass. And Apple's invitation for this WWDC is a huge hint at this, with everything looking like frosted glass, which looks similar to Vision OS. For number five, we have subtle lighting changes. With the uh, translucent UI elements, they kind of interact with different lighting conditions of the room the user is in, like when you're using Vision Pro. And for number six, we have simplicity. Mark Gurman was talking about this new design, giving it an airier, lighter feel with cleaner fonts, bolder text. Mark Gurman said that iOS 26 will be simpler to use, faster to navigate, easier to learn, which is great news since it'll be the same across all of the OS. And in my opinion, this is gonna be a huge upgrade to the experience that you get when you're using new Macs, especially like the M4 series chip powered Macs, like the M4 MacBook Air, which is only about $850 on Amazon. This is gonna give you such a great fresh feel for such a great price. And it very well may lead to even more people switching from Windows over to these M4 Macs. And now with that said, let's get into the macOS Tahoe features that we should expect at WWDC. First of all, we have rumors of new Apple intelligence features coming to macOS Tahoe, and Apple's planning to update their Shortcuts app to finally integrate Apple intelligence, which will allow users to create actions more simply and easily. We also, a few weeks back, got a rumor from Google CEO Yo, Sundar Pichai, I think I said that right, that Apple is gonna announce Google Gemini integration for their devices at WWDC, going into products like iPhones and maybe even the Mac. Now, I believe this is the perfect time for a new version of Safari with Gemini built in, which would be awesome. And it's really the only way that Apple can compete because Google just built Gemini into Chrome 
and I honestly don't even want to use Safari anymore because of it. So it's really Apple's last chance to make Safari competitive again. Another small but cool feature is that vehicle motion cues are going to be added to Mac OS. So let's say you're working on your MacBook while let's say getting an Uber ride across town, it'll help prevent you from getting car sick with the motion cues moving around. And I honestly use this all the time with my iPhone in the car, so it works great. Another big new feature that's coming is a brand new dedicated gaming app, which will fully replace the game center. So it's gonna basically act as a new gaming hub being fully redesigned and available on pretty much all of Apple's other operating systems, which means that it's gonna be a very big deal. And with that, we could potentially see some brand new games being announced with Apple Silicon support to kind of make this be hyped up and very useful from the get-go. Another new feature that Mark Gurman revealed was that Apple's planning on a new system that will sync your Wi-Fi details automatically between your devices so you don't have to keep logging in separately. It'll just auto be connected on all devices in places like, let's say, gyms, hotels, etc. And finally, for the last exciting feature, we know that iOS 26 is expected to get a new AI-powered battery management mode, but I don't see why that can't come to MacBooks as well, to basically learn your battery drain and charge patterns and your app usage and everything to help improve battery life using AI. And now with that said, let's talk about compatibility because Mac OS 26 is rumored to be dropping support for a lot of older Intel Macs. We have the 2018 MacBook Pro, 2019 iMac, 2017 iMac Pro, the legend, which is losing support, the 2018 Mac Mini, and the 2020 MacBook Air, which is the last Intel MacBook Air. Those are a lot of Intel-based Macs. However, surprisingly, there are some Macs like the 2019 Mac Pro and MacBook Pro that will still get support even with those old Intel chips, but honestly, I feel like this is the perfect time for the new Mac OS 26 Tahoe to completely drop Intel chip support, seeing as it's already been five years since the M1 chip has launched. This way, Apple can fully focus on building in more powerful and capable features that require Apple Silicon being fully optimized without having to worry about bloating up the software with legacy Intel chip support. So that would make everything a lot more feature-packed, useful, and efficient. So with that said, guys, that's everything you should expect with macOS 26 Tahoe coming in just a couple of days. Let me know your wish list features for macOS down in the comment section below and subscribe above for more videos like this one. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.